Hi, I'm John Davis, and this is Motor Week. Join us for a trip down the ultra-fast lane in the Callaway SC 757Z06 Corvette. Pat Goss helps us decipher electric lingo. Lauren Morrison sees how teens are making technology make sense. And we'll test the first effort of a new car company, the Genesis G90. So come drive with us next. Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine, brought to you by... It's got 430 foot units of beast. Tire Rack wants you to be smart with your car. They can help you choose the right tires for your vehicle. Oops. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Rock Auto has auto parts from hundreds of manufacturers, offering a variety of brands, prices, and specifications. RockAuto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. As of right now, the Z06 sits atop the stock Corvette horsepower heap. But even though it breached a whole new level of performance for Chevrolet, it wasn't enough for the folks at Callaway Cars. And of course, they worked their magic and brought us a 757 horsepower beast. So let's see how it runs. It's true, the 2016 Chevrolet Corvette Z06 is more than enough car for most mortals, but we're not most, and neither are the hard-charging gearhead geniuses at Callaway Cars. This SC 757 Z06 is their answer to the question, how can you make a Z06 even better? Adding power is a time-tested means, and here that methodology is carried out by upping supercharger displacement from 1.7 liters to 2.3. The intercooler is redesigned, as is the intake manifold, fed by Callaway's high-flow cold air intake system. When it's all said and done, 757 horsepower and 777 pound-feet of torque now pour out of Chevrolet's LT4 V8, both measures jumping 100 plus from the stock Z06. Those numbers might also bring to mind certain Boeing aircraft. And while those planes certainly have this Z06 covered, as far as top speed and seating capacity goes, this Callaway's takeoff puts both to shame. Letting it rip at the strip, this vet will hit 60 in 2.8 seconds, two tenths faster than a stock Z06. The Savage acceleration pours on the entire trip through the quarter mile, with the rear tire seemingly fighting for traction the whole way. And just when you think you've found some, it's over and done with, and a quick 10.5 seconds with a trap speed of 131 miles per hour. When abusing all of that power on a road course, as we found typical with Callaway, this Z06 feels solid and never fragile. Power delivery is simply incredible as the car pulls like crazy, requiring you to exercise patience with the pedal until you get it fully straightened out on an exit or be prepared to deal with the consequences. Keep a steady throttle through the corner, however, and the car sticks with JB Weld-like grip. And like any vet in recent memory, cornering behavior is both predictable and effortlessly manageable. Callaway's optional short throw shifter is easily one of the best we've laid our hands on, managing the Z06's seven speed with precision. This Z06 did come with GM's optional Z07 performance package that includes carbon ceramic brakes. And while they perform very well, they're not quite Porsche spec. All in all, this pumped up Z06 is a big beast of a track car that feels quite at home no matter how big the track is or how long the straights may be. Not that you can't cruise comfortably down to the local cars and coffee hangout or even back and forth to work every day if you must. 
Unless, of course, your neighbors are overly sensitive to the sounds of eight cylinders gloriously expelling their triumphant tune through Callaway Sport exhaust system. The Z06's exterior is already pretty radical looking, particularly when you opt to add the full aero package. So not much has been added, just Callaway's aero surround hood, some badging, and obviously the double D exhaust tips that are nicely integrated into the rear fascia. Wheels and tires remain stock sizes, 19 inch fronts with 285-30 Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s and 20 inch rears with 335-25 rubber. Likewise indoors, there's updated trim, embroidered floor mats and naturally a branded console emblem. And all of the normal Corvette comfort and convenience features are here as well. Certainly none of this happens by magic, rather by powerful engineering, nor does it come free. An SC757 package adds $17,995 to any Z06 that you choose, which as we all know, starts at $80,395, putting you at $98,390 at a minimum. Goodies like sport exhaust and short throw shifters are on top of that. Once again, with the 2016 SC757Z06 Corvette, Callaway has proven that no matter how great you think a car is, they can make it better. And that's pretty good news for all of us, especially if you're looking to own the baddest vet on your block. Our success story this week takes us to Sacramento, the state capital of California. Since 2011, the city's Department of General Services has included electric and plug-in hybrids in their fleet, now totaling close to 60 vehicles. They use motor pool level two chargers that partially rely on solar power, while an additional charging station is for employees' personal vehicles. The city is also trying out a plugless battery charger to see if this wireless technology is ready for deployment. Officials hope their alt-fuel efforts will encourage others to follow suit. Anything we can do to increase the, the hybrid vehicles on the road, the alt-fuel vehicles, is, is good for us and the citizens of Sacramento. Sacramento has received top billings in recent years and numerous government green fleet awards. Prestigious honors all that recognize the city's ongoing efforts to reduce dependence on imported petroleum and improve air quality in California's city of trees. New cars today are getting smarter and smarter with more new technology being added at every turn. Some of it not so easy to figure out even for seasoned car shoppers. But for the youngest generation who've grown up with high tech at their fingertips, it's an everyday thing. And that's why one dealership near Boston has turned to tech savvy teens for help. And we sent our FYI reporter Lauren Morrison there for a lesson. Vehicles today come with all kinds of cool technology, but let's be real, it can be a little overwhelming. If you're like me, you don't know half of your vehicle's capabilities or how to work them, but that's where these guys come in. Buttons on the dash and wheel, voice command, options for towing, and even touch screens. Trying to figure out how to operate them can leave your head spinning, even if you read the owner's manual. I mean, let's face it, I mean, technology's changed over the years a lot. I mean, we went from the flip phone to the iPhone, and there's so many things on these cars these days that people don't understand. But Quirk Ford's technology team does understand. They're all high school students, ranging from 15 to 18 years old, so this kind of technology is second nature for them. The kids I work with, those kids are amazing. Those kids know more about technology than any adult would give them credit for. After the sale is made, that's when the tech team gets to work. I know myself, being the age I am, I would be very intimidated when a 15-year-old young man sits with me to go over something that I just purchased that I have no idea what I bought, and he knows every item on that vehicle from top to bottom. So I decided to give the team a test and find out how much they really know. Spoiler alert, they know a lot. All right, Danny, so I just bought this Mustang. 
walk us through what a typical day looks like for you. Okay. Well, first, do you want to add your phone? Okay, yes, of course. Perfect. After syncing my phone. And then under Bluetooth, you're going to look for under other devices. It should be sync, so you can press that. It was on to the steering wheel. The voice command actually plays a huge role in all of this technology. You can make phone calls, you can change the radio station. Moving from the Mustang, it was time to really test these teens with a touch screen. So this here is our new Sync 3 touchscreen, which replaces the old MyFord touch. A rundown of the navigation system. So nav gives you a map of where you are, and the red arrow controls where you are. Uh, you can zoom in and zoom out on your map with the plus and minus right here. And to talk about towing. So up here on the main screen, so you can scroll through here and find certain towing information. It's clear these teens know their tech talk. Whether it's a basic package, like the one in this 2016 Ford Mustang, to this decked out Explorer, which has every piece of technology you could ever want or need, the teens really have an understanding of all the technology in every one of these vehicles on the lot. Some of the training that we do is we take online tests um, and basically just learning the vehicles ourselves. So going in, sitting there alone, just going through all the new, if there's a new feature added, I'm just learning those and taking our own time just to get used to them. And let's face it, making $10 an hour sitting in the latest models with the newest technology beats flipping burgers for your first job. So we get to sit in these awesome brand new cars, you know, it's, it's kind of a luxury. And eager applicants seem to know just what a luxury that is. Yes, I have well over 100 applications of waiting, <laughs> waiting gentlemen that want to work. Other dealerships from around the country won in on the tech team too. I've had at least 12 different dealerships from different states contact me in reference to how to start the program, what I did to start it, hiring process, age requirements, and what we actually pay the kids. For Quirk Ford, though, the teens just add another layer of customer service. Here's the thing. If I'm buying a $40,000 car, I don't want to learn $10,000 worth of merchandise that's in that car. I want to learn all $40,000 so I get my money's worth. A rundown of all the tech specs in a vehicle takes a little less than an hour. And while not every new owner opts to talk to a team before leaving the lot, most find their way back if they don't. Yeah, yeah, I have seen people come back and say, oh, no big deal, I can handle this myself, and then they're right back. Time now for our weekly visit to Goss's Garage. This time, Pat's going to decode a little car care electric lingo. So you have an electrical or electronics problem with your modern car and you're talking to a repair shop. How do you know if it's the right repair shop for that type of repair? They may be good for all sorts of things, but they may not know about electricity. Well, a couple of the key words you can look out for is a technician or a service writer that starts talking to you about fire. Well, electricity is not fire. Or they may talk to you about juice. Well, electricity is not juice either. See, there are three basic terms as far as electricity is concerned. They are voltage, amperage, and resistance. Now, let's use a garden hose to visualize what these terms would mean. Okay, now, voltage is pressure. So in your garden hose, what that would amount to is how much force the water is coming out of the end with. Now, as far as amperage is concerned, amperage is volume, or with a garden hose, gallons per minute. So that would be related to how much water is coming out. Resistance, well, resistance opposes current flow, and to visualize that with the garden hose, what we do is we put our thumb over the end of it, and we see that the volume goes way down, but the force the amount of water coming out is smaller, but we can shoot it clear across the yard. That's resistance. So those are the three terms, and those are the terms that the technician has to know. So if they don't know the basics, maybe they don't have the right equipment. They have to have specialized equipment for modern cars, equipment that won't damage the sophisticated electronics and that can happen very easily with wrong equipment. So shop wisely before you let somebody dig into the electrical system of your car. 
And if you have a question or comment, drop me a line right here at Motor Week. The auto industry gives buyers lots of different choices and experiences. So here are some of the latest in this week's Quick Spin. This week's Quick Spin puts us in the lap of luxury a little higher above the road. In the 2017 Infiniti QX30 Compact Crossover, it shares the same platform and 208 horsepower turbocharged drivetrain as the Mercedes GLA 250 Cute Ute and is a result of a six-year-old technology partnership. But there's no mistaking, the QX30 is an Infiniti with the same sense of stylized adventure that is a calling card of their larger utilities. While the interior also borrows a lot of hardware from the GLA, it fits into the QX30's environment that is far trendier, yet just as useful. But the sloping roof line we like so much outside makes rear headroom and overall cargo space quite tight. One thing Infiniti was generous with is sound insulation. The QX30 is quieter than most small utes, so even on rough roads, conversation is easy. The QX30 is a crossover, but just barely. So it's no surprise that it drives more like a car than an SUV. The suspension is more rigid than most crossovers, and the steering requires more effort. So you sacrifice some comfort, but in return, you get better handling and a more engaging drive. And in addition, you get a two liter turbo four cylinder engine hooked to a seven speed dual clutch transmission, both aimed at performance rather than comfort. The 2017 Infiniti QX30 gives entry level luxury buyers a reason to be attracted to the brand in one super hot segment of the market. Prices started just under $30,000 and it's in dealerships now. Over at parent Nissan, a new model year brings subtle and powerful changes to the 2017 Nissan Pathfinder. A redesigned bumper and LED headlights lead the way on this platinum four-wheel drive model. Drivers of lesser trims must settle for halogen. All will be looking over a redesigned hood that Nissan describes as more aggressive. As to the most powerful change, you'll have to pop that hood. The 3.5 liter V6 now rates 284 horsepower, that's up 24. Our driver easily noticed the difference, describing it as one robust ride. Maximum towing capacity increases by half a ton to 6,000 pounds, among the highest in its class. The Pathfinder continues to impress inside as well. An eight inch color display, formerly only on platinum trim, is now standard on all models. At the rear are new bumper and taillights and a new motion activated lift gate for when your hands are full but your feet are free. Unchanged are the Pathfinder's excellent road manners. It remains among the most agile in its near full-size three-row crossover class without being so softly sprung that body roll is a problem. Prices started just under $30,000 for the two-wheel drive version and just under $32,000 with all-wheel drive. The 2017 Nissan Pathfinder is available in dealers now and we'll have more quick spins soon. Parting may have been sweet sorrow back in Shakespeare's time, but on this particular day, there's nothing sweet about seeing our long-term 2016 Mazda MX-5 Miata leave our lot for the last time. We racked up just over 5,000 miles in our four-month summertime fling with Mazda's revivalist Roadster, and we enjoyed every one of them. Lightweight, capable power, and excellent road manners with great driving ergonomics, a simple to operate convertible top, and plenty of creature comforts all make this our clear pick for affordable fun. Little else at its price point offers that connected to the road feel that makes driving a true pleasure to savor and not just a necessary task to endure. And the fact that we were able to have that much fun while averaging 36.8 miles per gallon may be this Miata's greatest feat of all. We've added 425 miles onto our Winnebago View 24J this go around, and that's just from a single long weekend getaway to the Assateague Island National Seashore. 
And this first time RVer came away impressed with how easy this 25 footer is to drive and maneuver, but also a little frustrated by a tank monitoring panel that had us topping off propane and water well before they were necessary. On the other hand, with no campsite hookups, our view's optional diesel generator kept us fully powered and comfortable. And while this trip didn't turn me or my spouse into RVers for life, we certainly understand the enormous appeal of having a home away from home wherever you go. The trip raised our diesel fuel economy average to a very good 13.7 miles per gallon. But this was just a shakedown cruise, as one of our staffers is pointing the view west for a good old-fashioned cross-country family sojourn. Stay tuned for more on how both he and the Winnie are holding up. But first, we'll check on our Volkswagen Beetle Dune and Toyota Tacoma on our next Motor Week long-term road test update. If you thought Hyundai was crazy for trying to cook up a luxury four-door with the 2009 Genesis sedan, while for 2017, they're trying a recipe that seems a whole lot crazier. Hyundai has gone all in and spun off Genesis as a whole new company, Genesis Motors. And their flagship, the G90, is our first taste of the new brand. So let's see if it's well done or just half-baked. The Genesis G90 is the successor to the full-size Hyundai Equus and is built on the lengthened chassis of the mid-sized Genesis sedan, now called G80. So the 90 is an automotive parlance, an all-new flagship sedan. And a self-proclaimed competitor to large car, stalwarts, Mercedes-Benz S-Class, BMW 7 Series, and Audi A8. But we think a more level playing field is with the Lexus LS and Cadillac CT6. The G90 drives with a super steady rock solid feel. A five link front and rear suspension combines with electronic adaptive damping to keep things smooth on almost all roads. There was very little harshness, even on some rough pavement in the British Columbian countryside outside Vancouver. The level of isolation achieved is all you could ask for. This is a cruiser for sure. On the highway, even on back roads like this, it is just whisper quiet, silky smooth. And that lends itself to truly appreciating the interior of the G90. Material quality is top notch, seat comfort is excellent, and the overall design is clearly one of a top drawer vehicle. But the biggest hurdle that Genesis must overcome is separating itself from Hyundai. And seeing some carryover switch gear and buttons will remind more astute observers of the kinship. Get past that, and the G90 is every bit a luxury contender on its own. Outside, it's less of its own thing and more a combination of what it aspires to be. The front favors recent Audi A8s, especially the grille, while in the rear, it's S-Class all the way. Take a step back, though, and it's a handsome car that demands a second look. Under the hood, a brand new standard 3.3-liter twin-turbo V6 with 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. Power delivery is strong, but perhaps lacks a little maturity and feel. Same goes for the eight-speed automatic. The one area where it doesn't quite match up to its German competitors, I say, is in the powertrain. It's not quite as refined as an Audi, a BMW, a Mercedes-Benz. Fuel economy rates 17 city, 24 highway, and 20 combined. That's about on par with rival V8s. Ditto the energy impact score of 16.5 barrels of oil used and 7.5 tons of CO2 emitted annually. A 420 horsepower 5 liter V8 and all wheel drive are the only options for the G90. Everything else, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise, lane keep assist, head up display and multi angle backup camera are standard. That makes for an easy pricing strategy at $69,050. H-Track all-wheel drive adds $2,500, while the V8 adds $1,600 more. Gaining a foothold is never easy, 
And in a segment with ultra high expectations and long heritages, there will be many who look at the G90 as just a dressed up Hyundai. But then we once said that about Lexus and Toyota too. And the 2017 G90 is just the beginning for Genesis, and it is indeed a strong first step towards a time when Genesis Motors and world-class luxury may be one and the same. Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, for more Motor Week, why not check out our podcast, daily news updates, and even complete episodes at pbs.org slash motorweek. And I hope you'll join us next time when we'll see how top mid-size utilities stack up. Also followed by a quick trip around the block in the McLaren 570 GT. Till then, I'm John Davis. We'll see you right here on Motor Week. To learn more about Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine, visit pbs.org slash motorweek. To order a DVD of this program, call 1-800-873-6154. Motor Week has been brought to you by... It's got 430 foot units of beast. Tire Rack wants you to be smart with your car. They can help you choose the right tires for your vehicle. Oops. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Rock Auto has auto parts from hundreds of manufacturers, offering a variety of brands, prices, and specifications. RockAuto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. This program was produced by Maryland Public Television, which is solely responsible for its content. Be more PBS.